<laughs> yeah, so do the handshake. <laughs> Lovely. Now can John and Chris swap places and do it all again? About 50 years ago, this hole in the ground was a freshly drawn pencil line on a topographical survey of, of this west side of the lake. About 44 years ago, we were running trains through it, and uh, there it rested until we eventually built these very fine portals and our uh, uh, Stonemasons are here with us today. I'm not quite sure where they're hiding. The, um, but anyhow, they are here on the train with us. And um, we have a tunnel now, which whatever length of the tunnel you read in any book, it is now wrong, because <laughs> we, we have made it at least three meters longer. <laughs> <laughs> so without any more ado, I'm going to, well, no, actually, there's more things I want to say. <laughs> for those who volunteered their services, not totally for free, but as near as damn it for free, <laughs> to work on building this tunnel, uh, they've always said to me it was one of their highlights of their career, because yes. they were lumbered with a challenge, and uh, they rose to the challenge. And when I look back on the building of the deviation, and I realized that people like Bunny Lewis, I, I landed in, in the <laughs> quite frequently. <laughs> and he always managed to find a solution to the problem and climb out of the hole I dug for him. And unfortunately, Bunny is one of the key people who ought to be here today. But we have to make do with the fact that down on the football pitches, is spent, his ashes are spread. So hopefully he's here with us in spirit. And uh, we have two of our three miners here, um, and uh, Robin here, and Bob over there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we have our shot creator in David Alpane, who I always say had what must have been one of the world's <laughs> worst jobs to do. Um, and survive, although I wouldn't have wanted to work in the tunnel. It sounded to me like a decidedly noisy location. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I really have problems with my hearing without having worked in the tunnel. Um, so I felt that in building these portals, we actually ought to follow tradition of many tunnels who have a plaque which shows, normally it's the engineer on his own, he gets a plaque, and traveling around the world, I discovered 
a lot of them say, in memoriam. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't only the workers, but also the bosses who sometimes died in building these tunnels. So, Liz, may I ask you with me to unveil well, this Which plan. means we move slightly. <laughs> <laughs> and we pull the cord. <laughs> Gair bach yn sydyn, diolch yn fawr iawn a i bawb am, am ddod heddiw yma. Mae chi bach yn frawychus i'n meddwl i weld bod ni gyd yn sefyll ar y lain fan un. A ddim gwaith yn gofod beth sy'n dod i'n, i'n rhan ni. Os gai i jyst ddeud hefyd, um, bydd rai ohonych chi'n nabod yng Ngôr i Dewi Ywyn Roberts o dan y grisia. Mi oedd o yn tyfu fy ni un hogyn bach, cafodd o i enni yn, yn 1963, oedd o'n tyfu fy ni wrth i'r gwaith mae gael ei wneud, a mae wedi gweld o reilffwr right yn ôl i dio. Uh, tan lan, dros y ffwr i'r ysgol yn tan y grisio, a chi'n nabod o, mae o wedi gweld y, y reilffwr yn, yn datblygu ar hyd yr amser. And it really... I don't know, I think it's such a delight. I think for all of us who've gone through, obviously we've all of us gone through the last 18 months and more of Covid, and the sheer experience of being able to come out and the vividness of being with other people. I know we're all already in high vis, which makes us even more, even more vivid. But I think these, the, 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 to come out today and to see these, the experience that we have of coming together, we've also got, like it always does, of course, between, between um, Belena Festiniog and Maintorog, it's always actually fantastic weather to welcome, <laughs> us, to welcome us as well. And just to, to, to see the railways, I mean, I, I'm very much aware that, that the work that has gone on for the, um, the seven heritage railways that are in this constituency, I'm, I'm honoured to be the Member of Parliament for the constituency with the highest number of heritage railways <laughs> in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and then various gauges, various gauges. Um, and it's been an immensely challenging year. So I think to see, to, 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 to be out today, to see how this railway for Stiniag and all the people who support it, all the volunteers, all the enthusiasts, all the staff who work on this, to have come out at the end of this incredibly difficult time and to be celebrating this, and also to have some of the people who worked on this, you know, back, back in the day, and we're talking about an incredible piece of work. I was reading the brief, would you believe it? I'm very grateful, Mike, for the brief. Mm -hmm earlier on, just the, the, the engineering significance of having this line, the way that it came through, the gradient at which it had to operate, to be a financially viable model to pull enough carriages, enough rolling stock to be, to be viable for the, for the railway line. And then to put this through, the work that went with this, I was the description of putting up the concrete in this tunnel and the way that 30% of it fell on your head and on the floor. It's the sheer work. What always fascinates me, and I, I come to it afresh every time, because um, so my, my friend Delith, who's come with me very kindly today, we're both art students, so I, I come to the engineering challenge anew and with fascination every time. The sheer, the, the, the engineering challenges behind these railway lines and to get these all to function, and how we all take it for granted. Mm. Don't you see that we, we take it for granted with transport, we take it for granted with energy. And it's, it, it, just to take the step back and to appreciate that, it's, mm. it's an honour. And it's an honour that you're here today. It's a real delight that you're here today. Thank you very much. But I think there's also some exciting news on the way, which I've been allowed by Paul to mention, <laughs> although I think the proper <laughs> announcement, we're not supposed to put this on social media, um, there's going to be a, a heritage lottery investment alongside investment from the, 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 the railway for Stineog itself of £4 million, pounds, which of course goes alongside the uh, World Heritage Site status as well. I've got some of the other cameras on me, I shouldn't be doing this, should I? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, to invest into Boston Lodge and to invest into the future of making sure that this, the railway all works together that alongside that, that we're developing the skills, and it's the skills for the young people. You'll, many of you will know that Network Rail send their apprenticeships here as well to learn the training skills. But we need these skills into the mm. future. And it's really exciting about that. And for, as it actually happens, for all the other heritage railways as well, we've got Tanner Thin and um, Clint Tegid, the Barla Lake. We've got some big projects on the go with, with those. And as I said, you know, a rising tide raises everybody's boats. Mm -hmm. So this is fantastic news for everybody. So... 
Thank you very much to you all. Diochen varialni chi e gyd am ddod heddiw. Mae'n braf gweld y brwf rydyd. Mi'n dweud o fyd i cydeirydd ar y grŵp trawsbleidiol yn San Stefan. As I said, to refer back to being one of the, the few, alongside Nicky Morgan, the previous minister who's now in the House of Lords, mm. uh, the few women on the, on the all-party the all parliamentary group who sort of deal with the enthusiasm of mostly very honourable um, members of the other place, the peers. Mostly. <laughs> 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 uh, mostly. <laughs> mostly. <laughs> an, an absolute delight and an absolute privilege to, to work with you with Heritage Rail. There will be challenges. There'll be challenges with coal in the future. There'll be challenges with all sorts of aspects of this. But I know that what's got this line to where it is today is the enthusiasm of the past to make sure that everything will come together. And it's the enthusiasm and the can-do spirit that makes such a difference. Uh, Great, yeah. I'll take it the other end. I can, I can yes. see yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is going to be the most popular. <laughs> so, having uh, moved into the sunshine, we now can't, we now can't see because we've been dazzled by it. Isn't that lovely? Um, it falls to me to welcome you all here today and say um, thank you to you all for coming. This is a, a really important day for us and uh, I need to explain a little bit about why that is. Uh, we're joined today by David Robinson from the National Lottery Heritage Fund and uh, as you all now know we're, we're talking about the success in uh, securing funding of three million pounds with the lottery for our project which is largely here at Boston Lodge. There's a little bit more to it than that though that I need to explain. First of all though I would just like to explain just a little bit about the background to how we got to today in that uh, we started a long time ago having worked with the lottery fund on a number of projects but we've had a quiet period for over a decade when we didn't work together. We've had a great success with the lottery. Um, that then led to more conversations about what might be possible and what could we do. And I know that one or two of you said uh, we've, when we've had conversations in the past that somehow we, we weren't quite sure that we could get a good fit with the lottery. But I'm pleased to say that as, through the Skills for the Future project we had a much stronger dialogue with the lottery people and uh, that has led to us being where we, where we are today. And so I think probably it's uh, for me to uh, ask David to say a few words but Oshan I think you'd like to just um, yeah. say a few words in the world for us. Yeah, so Borida Pau, and I just tried Cronodde, or Bed with the Paul and Vanna. And Diochen Varnik, he did am Lord have you, Mar Highland Gwenny and any. A man, do you not push seek any man a trail for them to have it, your Gumined Sail have it. And be the Apathadas in Dick with our project, the man, and be so the knee a man a trail for them to have it, your Gumined Sail, like your Pobble Sail, like a Rardal, a man, Prothmadog, a heavy done winner. I bet he Diochen Varian am Lord. And yes, when you move a project and uh, build a new line, I can, yeah, do a very animous go to my heavy. David, and over to you. Thank you. Um, au revoir. Good morning to everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here today. I've been explaining to Paul and others as I've gone around and learned just a little about this project this morning. That my last visit here, like everyone else, it seems, was a family visit in the in the 60s. Um, I've trampled past in my Cadu years on the way to Cricket Castle but I've not ridden on the railway for quite some years. Um, so I'm one of the committee members for, the, for Wales within the National Lottery Heritage Fund 
together with my five colleagues on the Wales Committee, we are the people that are the decision makers for, for large and exciting projects like this one. I'm teaching grandmother to suck eggs here a little bit, um, but everyone will know, of course, the immense heritage significance of the Fistiniog and Welsh Highland Railways, and that 200th anniversary of the beginning of the enterprise is fast approaching now. In many ways, preparing for that milestone, the Committee for Wales is delighted to have been able to award this project grant of £3.1 million. This grant, along with the partnership funding of course, will allow the Fistinian Railway Company to safeguard, to improve and to share its magnificent railway heritage, particularly here at the Boston Lodge work site. In all, the project should do much to transform and to repurpose an already internationally significant heritage asset. Maintaining traditional engineering skills with an eye not just to the immediate future, but for future generations. Within the committee, we, we've been enthused by the ambition and the obvious excitement within the project. One which will tell the story of the railway to an increasing number of visitors. Through its outputs, those visitors will gain a much deeper understanding of the pioneering spirit within the early railway and come to appreciate the way that it and the industry it served, of course, shaped the landscape and its communities. It very much becomes a gateway, a touchstone for finding out more about the World Heritage, newly designated World Heritage site. We believe that the project will enable the railway to involve more people and a much wider range of people in this important aspect of the Welsh heritage. We applaud the drive to help people develop new skills and we welcome plans to rescue the historic buildings here at Boston Lodge, the oldest continuously operating railway engineering works in the world, says the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> now, more broadly, the National Lottery Heritage Fund is one of the principal funders of the built, natu natu built Natural Heritage in Wales. Over the past 26 years, we've invested more than £420 million throughout the Welsh heritage sector. During that time, we've supported and funded over 3,000 projects and programmes across the country with awards of anything between £3,000 and £10 million. As a result, jobs have been saved, new jobs have been created, Projects have been initiated and supported, local economies have been boosted and Wales's rich heritage has been saved for future generations. That's all thanks to the National Lottery players, of course, and we must never forget them. But also our many partners, including Welsh Government and the Department for Culture, Media and Sport. I don't have to remind anyone here, we've all had a very difficult 18 months through the COVID-19 pandemic. But I'm pleased to say that the National Lottery Heritage Fund has been there the whole time. Indeed, I'm proud to say that our teams have been working flat out through the entire pandemic, providing another £18 million for funding for heritage in Wales. We in the National Lottery Heritage Fund are constantly learning from our projects, and we're keen to share that learning with partners. Most recently, for example, We've worked with Welsh Government to inform its Race Equality Action Plan, which the Minister Jane Hutt and her team are leading on. At the heart of all our work and our projects is inclusion. We ask that all projects ensure that a wider range of people are involved in heritage. After all, heritage helps create a sense of local identity and pride, as, much as, mu as well as much wider benefits not just social and economic generation. This particular project ticks all the boxes and I'd like to say a very big well done, sincerely a very big well done to everyone involved thus far. Thank you again for inviting me today. The National Lottery Heritage Fund is committed to providing continuing support and I urge you and anyone watching to visit our website <coughs> heritagefund.org.uk, click the funding tab and you'll find details of the grant programmes we're currently operating. In conclusion then, congratulations to the Fistini Open Welsh Island Railways. Forgive me, 
and full steam ahead with this wonderful project. <laughs> Thank you. Um, then my innovation did, uh, but um, my own copy of daughter, ma, and all the Greeks have a cat do in a quick decker, Mindigas at Cricket, a tribute or a train, so my gander core or real force dipping back and all, and he bid as good, Stanidi Winnebu, Covenant and Nordi Aun through the pandemic, my Gronva, where he bought in Greece or through his honey, and my Nordi Covenogi Ni and Aru Yaun. Mae'n gwirio honedd, maen nhw'n ail bwrpasu rheilffordd i wneud hi'n addas i'r dyfodol, cyflion i bobl ifanc, cyflion i bobl cylch yn sgil dynodiad Treftadaeth y Byd gyn UNESCO, a maen nhw'n gyfarch ni am un gwaith, a swn i'n fideo'n personol i ddiolch o eu griw am eu gwaith nhw, diolch o mawr. So, um... In concluding, and before we spend a little bit more time with David showing him the site and telling you a bit more about our project, because I know there's, uh, it's quite a complex project with a lot of different facets to it, uh, just to say a few, few words, just to remind us all what this project is about, um, because it is a complicated project. But let's uh, start at the beginning. We know that our railway welcomes 200,000 people or more each year to travel on our trains and yet many of those people will have no idea of the history of the area and the history of the slate industry of which we're an integral part. As the generations go on that story is slipping through our fingers and it's part of our job to make sure that that doesn't happen, that our story is told because if stories aren't told history is lost we care about our history, we want to do something to make sure it remains alive and that people know about it. So the World Heritage Site for the Slate Industry of North Wales recognises just how important this area is and how important that industry has been to this area. It shaped so much of what we see around us. We need to tell that story. And we're working in partnership with the government, Lottery, World Heritage Site to tell that story. And we, because we've got a lot of people visiting us already, we make the natural first partner for funding in the Welsh World Heritage Site. And hopefully there'll be more as well who get that funding that help us to tell the story. So, we will be embarking on a programme of interpretation explaining to all those visitors a little bit more so everybody who visits the railway hopefully will learn a little bit more about our history the railway and the local area the slate industry so they learn a little bit more but very importantly there's two ways that we're going to do that yes there'll be the usual uh, boards and digital interpretation but a lot of what we will do will be about first-hand interpretation our people our staff telling an accurate story and giving some real facts about the area in which we live and work. So people and storytelling comes first. Then if, as we know happens, somebody said this is fantastic, how do I find out more? We are going to use the site at Boston Lodge to give an opportunity for a smaller number of people, 8 to 10,000 a year maybe, to come have a tour around the site and spend a bit longer finding more detail about our history. And then if they bite again and want more information there'll be opportunities to have uh, deeper experiences with us such as learning particular skills, becoming part of our volunteer team and also there are employment opportunities too. So it's not just one thing, it's a suite of things that takes us from an initial interest right through to being part of us. Now, I've spoken about visitors, but of course our visitors include the people in the community that live around us. Yeah? And part of this is actually helping the local community to understand its own history. And they'll be part of that. So, the next steps that we will take now are all about 
making sure that interpretation works. And then, of course, there will be the more obvious bit, which is the physical work at Boston Lodge. And by having these funds available to us, we're going to be able to conserve many of the older buildings at Boston Lodge and also provide decent facilities to keep this workshop running into the next hundred years. Because as we all, all of us who know who work here, that actually it feels like a 200 year old workshop and we really do need to, uh, to do something to keep it fit for the future. So for those of you who are not part of the, the Festin Hill team, just to say what's going on in the yard here at the moment. Merthyn Emery's was the first steam locomotive built here at Boston Lodge in 1879. The works behind us was actually built in order to build this loco and the ones that followed it. Before 1879, we bought our locomotives from England and brought them, brought them here. But since Merlin has been built, generally speaking, we've built our own and we're very proud of that. Boston Lodge is the only locomotive works in the world that has built engines in the 19th, 20th and 21st centuries and we're continuing to do, it, do that. And so the brown boiler unit behind you on the left in the yard is the latest new locomotive under construction. It's a locomotive called James Spooner, which is a, rep uh, or a replica inspired by a loco that existed in the past but was scrapped in the 1930s. James Spooner should be completed within the next 18 months and you'll see it hauling trains day in, day out on the Festinial Railway. So we're still building locomotives today. The little locomotive Welsh Pony was the one, the last one that we completed here and was actually a restoration of the locomotive from the 1860s which had been out of traffic for over 80 years, sat on a plinth outside our station in Port Maddock and we've restored it back to traffic. I'll stop there and suffice to say that um, you're all welcome to ask any questions you, you like. We're happy to show you around, David particularly, we'll show you some of the work that we do. And uh, I look forward to welcoming you all back here in, in later times as the project develops. We want to keep showing you around, explaining what we're doing and, uh, and see what's going on. Thank you.